hello pray and share warriors how are y'all doing I'm working on getting my music set up I hope you had an awesome Thursday I did I stayed home all day I'm still in my jammies it's a good day I don't know really what much I got accomplished but I did get some accomplished I've got dishes done and I've already cooked dinner now I'm going to have to plug this phone in here. I think my phone has enough battery. But this phone does not. This phone is dying. It's dying. Hopefully it's not going to make noise through my computer. Sometimes it does. This phone only likes its charger. It doesn't like other chargers. Okay, well, I want to talk to you about God makes a way. So, how many of you know that God makes a way when there is absolutely no way? I do, I do, I do, I do. Oh my, that is so funny. I can't watch that right now, though. All right, I'm nearly to my music. Oh, and the way maker is first. So I want to explain to you tonight. Oh, sorry. Can't let you listen to that. on this phone I guess I don't know what is wrong with my Bluetooth it's like it doesn't last very long and uh, oh my oh there we are there we are okay I got all these pop up things okay there we go all right, so, so sorry. <laughs> so let's uh, get into some prayer. And then we're going to talk about Waymaker. And I'm going to give you some of my testimony. Uh, just a very small part because uh, we don't have all night to sit here and talk about my testimony. Okay, so let's jump into some prayer. God, we just uh, praise you and thank you, God, because you are our way, our way maker. <clears throat> you are our miracle worker. You are our promise keeper. You are our light in the darkness, God. You are from everlasting to everlasting. You are the great Jehovah. You are the great I am. You are magnificent and powerful and mighty. We thank you for being our creator, our sustainer, our protector our provider, for being our shelter in the storm, for being our strength, and being our refuge, God, and just so much more. And we just, we, um, we know, God, that you are the righteous judge, that will judge all in righteousness. But God, you want none to perish, and you are kind and loving and compassionate and forgiving and patient God thank you for calling us as your children thank you for loving us we love you with our whole heart our soul our mind and our strength God we just cry out for the lost we just pray that you would open their eyes and their ears to the truth that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so they could be saved we pray for um, the lost God I mean for the prodigals we just pray for the prodigals to return to you to uh, repent God and to just let you reconcile the relationship between you and them and just make it new God we pray for all the disasters all the wars all the rumors of wars we just pray for all people impacted by the disasters and the wars God that you would be with them that you would meet their needs God 
that someone would come along and be the hands and feet of Jesus, showing them the loving compassion that Jesus has for them. We just pray for people that have lost loved ones. We just pray that you would open their hearts and their minds. God, that you would give them peace and comfort and strength, that they would feel your presence in their time of loss. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, my friends. Oh, my eye itches. Me and the whatever's outside, we are not friends right now. I think it's mold. I think it's Mr. Mold is outside. and So I'm not taking... I'm taking my allergy medicine that I take. When I'm having an allergy attack, when I get up and I have a headache and everything, so... I switch back and forth. I don't take the same thing all the time. Okay, let me read what I put on Facebook today. Because um, it came from testimony that I gave last night at family night. So I love this song and message. I'm listening to Waymaker right now. I love this song. It so ministers to me. Um, I love the song and message by Leland. Other people sing this to you, but this song has really been reminding me of what all God has done in my life. This song moves my spirit. Every part of this song reminds me of how God has moved me closer to Him. When and why. God is my way maker. He has made a way for me so many times when there looked like there was absolutely no way. He showed me the way back to Him and what I learned from my mama who loves Jesus and resides with Him now. She more than taught me to love Jesus by being my living example of the loving compassion of Jesus all my life. I strayed away as a teen, college student, and early adult. But when I got pregnant at 24 with my daughter Brittany, God started drawing me back to Him through His truth, through the truth in His Word. I knew I knew in my head who Jesus was because my mama made sure we were in church, but I did not know in my heart who Jesus was. He made a way at the age of 31 for me to be saved through Jesus. The Holy Spirit drew me to Jesus on May 14, 1991, um, 30 years ago, exactly 30 years. My spiritual birthday and the day my Christianity journey began and my cross-country race of hills and valleys started too. Because being a Christian doesn't mean that everything is perfect and that you're not going to have problems because that's not true and that's not reality. Uh, we are going to have problems, even as Christians. Um, I lost my spot. God has removed obstacles to make a way every time throughout my life. God is my miracle worker. I have experienced so many instances in my life when God intervened that only can be described as miracles. Ricky's cancer that was healed in two to three months. The money raised for this treatment. Seth's leukemia treatment that should have lasted three and a half years, shortened by a miraculous donation of a cord blood transplant from a stranger to six months. We were home in six months. My driver's license renewal was the last <coughs> miracle granting. Who removed the easy button from this process? COVID or the fear of it? God is my promise keeper. He has kept so many promises to me personally among all his promises kept in his word. He made me a personal promise through a miscarriage in 2002 that was fulfilled when Seth was born. Then in 2009 when Seth was diagnosed with leukemia, I thought it was a death sentence and God was going to break his promise. But through this he taught me many lessons. He taught me to praise Him in all things. Nothing's too hard for God, and great is His faithfulness. He also reminded me of old lessons like trust me 
He's got the whole world in his hands from when Seth was born. God is my light in the darkness. He sends the light of Jesus in my dark valleys, sometimes through other believers. Jesus is always there, and I am never alone. Sometimes Jesus has gone to get me when I strayed away, just like a good shepherd tends to his sheep. God is always working, even when we don't see it or feel it. He is working out all details, solutions, and outcomes that only He knows. So we have to wait and trust on His perfect will and timing. God's power is above addictions, loneliness, cancer, weakness, other illnesses, depression, anxiety, and all problems we face in life. I am a work in progress. Through God, my way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, and light in the darkness. Until I die or fly out of here with my King Jesus. So this was my testimony that I shared last night for family night at the WSBC Youth House. God asked me to share so in obedience. So I did. Music is more than just lyrics that I'm singing. They are tied to memories in my life, good and bad. This song is among my favorites and has ministered to me tremendously since I first heard it. If you are not saved today, do it now. Come as you are. Call upon the name of Jesus and be saved now. God is trying to make a way through Jesus to your heart. Open the door to Jesus. He is knocking on your heart. Inviting Jesus into my heart was the best decision I ever made. Revelation 3.20, come to him now. So Revelation 3.20 talks about Jesus knocking on your heart or knocking on the door. And if you open it up, he will eat with you. That's what Revelation 3.20 is. Okay, so that's what I wrote this morning about being a Waymaker. I have my Waymaker t-shirt on. I have three of these. Um, this is one of my favorite ones. It fits really good. Um, the other two, not so much. I don't like them as much. Okay. So let's look up some scripture about God making a way. Okay, Jeremiah 29.11. I like this scripture a lot. Twenty nine eleven. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. So God knows Okay, this one says plans for welfare and not for evil to give you a future and a hope is what this one says. Okay. And this one also, this is ESV, for I know the plans that I have for you. And uh, King James Version says, I know the thoughts I think towards you. So God knows. He has a plan and purpose for our lives. And he's going to make a way. His, his plan and purpose for our lives is going to be fulfilled. And so he's going to make a way to make that happen. So now let's read... Let's read Proverbs 3, 5 through 6.
Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. Okay, it says this. This is what it says. 3, 5 through 6. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes, fear the Lord, and depart from depart from evil. So trusting in the Lord with all of our heart and leaning not on our own understanding. And in all ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct our paths. So he shall direct our paths. So Proverbs 16.3 says something similar. Sixteen three says, Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. And thy thoughts shall be established. And this says, Thy plans will be established. The Lord hath made all things for himself, yea, even the wicked, for the day of evil. Every one that is proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Though hand join in hand, he shall not be unpunished. The preparation of the heart in man and the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. All the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes, but the Lord weigheth the spirits. Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. And this one says plans. Well, let's read Isaiah 40, 31. Because sometimes we have to wait on God when he is working things out. And sometimes it's hard to do the wait thing. So 40, 31 says this. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength, and they shall mount up with wings as eagles, and they shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. And so this other thing says, well, it says about the same thing. So sometimes we have to wait on God to make a way. Sometimes we have to wait for a miracle. Sometimes we have to wait for a promise to be fulfilled. And sometimes we have to wait for the light to come in the darkness. Okay, let's read 2 Peter 3, 9. And I think we're going to let it go with that. Second Peter three nine. Okay, second Peter three nine. The Lord is not slack concerning his promises, some men count slackness, but is long suffering to us word, not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye be in all holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of the Lord, the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. 
Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, and wherein dwelleth righteousness. So, I have my picture of the new heaven and earth over here behind me. I moved it. And I also made me some signs to put above my poster that I really like. The New Jerusalem and with the scripture uh, Revelation 21, 2 through 3. I really like that. I put that up above and then on the other side I put Forever Home and I put the scripture Revelation 22, 12 through 13. So I kind of like that. I kind of had a blank space up there, so I put those, I made those signs and put them on there. My favorite color, purple, and with gold. I thought it was very heavenly looking. Okay, well, I think that that is all the scriptures that I have to read tonight. So if you have any comments, if you think of any scripture that you think goes with Waymaker, Miracle Worker, Promise Keeper, and Light in the Darkness, then please put it in the comments. Now it is time to do a, um, um, how do we want to do this? We might do one of our longer versions because my quiet time notes were a little bit private today. So let's do this one. This one has lots of scripture in it. God's sample plan to salvation. Oh, here comes my son. My friend, I'm asking you the most important question of life. Your joy or your sorrow for all eternity depends upon your answer. The question is, are you saved? Is it not a question of how good you are? It is not a question of how good you are, nor if you are a church member, but are you saved? Are you sure you will go to heaven when you die? God says, in order to go to heaven, you must be born again. In John 3, 7, Jesus said to Nicodemus, you must be born again. In the Bible, God gives us the plan of how to be born again, which means to be saved. His plan is simple. You can be saved today. How? First, my friend, you must realize you're a sinner. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 3.23 Because you are a sinner, you are condemned to death. For the wages, the payment of sin is death. Romans 6.23 This includes eternal separation from God in hell. It is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. Hebrews 9.27 But God loved you so much, he gave his only begotten son, Jesus, to bear your sin and die in your place. He hath made him, Jesus, who knew no sin, to be sin for us, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. 2 Corinthians 5.21 Jesus had to shed his blood and die, for the life of the flesh is in the blood. Leviticus 17.11 Without shedding of blood, blood is no remission, or no pardon. Hebrews 9.22 God commendeth his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 5.8 Although we cannot understand how God said my sins and your sins were laid upon Jesus and he died in our place, he became our substitute. It is true. God cannot lie. My friend, God commandeth all men everywhere to repent. Acts 17.30 The repentance is a change of mind that agrees with God that one is a sinner and also agrees with what Jesus did for us on the cross. In Acts 16, 30 through 31, the Philippian jailer asked Paul and Silas, Sirs, what, was, what must we do, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Simply believe on him 
as the one who bore your sin, died in your place, was buried, in whom God resurrected. His resurrection powerfully assures that the believer can claim everlasting life when Jesus is received as Savior. But as many as received him, to them he gave to them gave he power to become sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. John 1, 12. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Romans 10, 13. Whoever includes you shall be saved means not maybe nor can but shall. Surely you realize that you are a sinner. Right now, wherever you are, repenting, lift your heart to God in prayer. In Luke 18, 13, the sinner prayed, God be merciful to me, a sinner. Just pray. I'm going to lead you in this prayer. Wow, I was thirsty. Um, okay. <clears throat> Just pray. <clears throat> oh God, I know I'm a sinner. I believe Jesus was my substitute when he died on the cross. I believe his shed blood, death, burial, and resurrection were for me. I now receive him as my Savior. I thank you for the forgiveness of my sins, the gift of salvation, in everlasting life because of your merciful grace. In Jesus' name I pray, Amen. So just take God at His word and claim His salvation by faith. Believe and you will be saved. No church, no lodge, no good works can save you. Remember, God does the saving, all of it. God's simple plan of salvation is you were a sinner. Therefore, unless you believe on Jesus who died in your place, you will spend eternity in hell. If you believe on him as your crucified, buried, and risen Savior, you receive forgiveness. For all of your sins and his gift of eternal salvation by faith. You say, surely it cannot be that simple. Yes, that simple. It is scriptural. It is God's plan. My friend, believe on Jesus and receive him as your Savior today. If his plan is not perfectly clear, read this tract over and over without laying it down until you understand it. Your soul is worth more than all the world. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Mark 8.36 Be sure you are saved. If you lose your soul, you miss heaven and lose all. Please let God save you in this very moment. God's power will save you. Keep you saved and enable you to live a victorious Christian life. There hath no temptations taken but taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that ye may be able to bear it. 1 Corinthians 10.13 do not trust your feelings, they change. Stand on God's promises, they never change. After you are saved, there are three things to practice daily for spiritual growth. Pray, 
you talk to God, read your Bible, God talks to you, witness, you talk for God. You should be baptized in obedience to the Lord Jesus Christ as a public testimony of your salvation. And then unite with Bible with a Bible believing church without delay. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord. Second Timothy one eight. Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. Matthew ten thirty two. Now this I think is. I don't know who did this. Oh, GodSimplePlan.org. Okay. This was a track that apparently they just put their church in, but this came from Grace Baptist Church. God's Simple Plan of Salvation is what that was. So if, if you said that prayer and you invited Jesus into your heart to be your Savior, then welcome to the kingdom family of God. The angels are rejoicing, and uh, your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life, and you are now saved, sealed, and sanctified through God by Jesus, His Son. And so, as it said, you know, pray for God to send you to a church. Seek God's Word every day. Uh, start reading in Matthew. Learn more about Jesus. And uh, pray. And pray praise too. I'm listening to praise music right now and I just love it listening to it in my earbud. Okay all right well I think that I did everything that I came to do tonight. I know it's not very long but I'm not reading you my quiet time notes because I was talking to God about some personal things that I don't want to share with everyone. Um, so tomorrow night I'll read you my notes if I'm here. I should be, but I'm going to Stephenville tomorrow too, so I may be late getting back. I don't think I will be though. Okay, so let's let's uh, get God's blessing on you. Number six, twenty-four through twenty-six. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious to, unto thee. I nearly got it. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. One of these days I'm going to have it memorized. Y'all are going to be really surprised. So anyway, that is God's blessing for you and your family. That he loves you deeply and he cares about every part of your life. So please, uh, if you have strayed away, come back to God. Repent of your sins and let him make your relationship new. Okay, I think it's time for me to pray. I'm going to go feed my child. I think he's in his room protesting because he doesn't. That's how he protests. He goes to his room if he doesn't like what's on TV. Or he comes in here. And I don't think he could get my door open a while ago. So he's gone to his room to protest. It's time to feed him anyway. God, we just come before you and we thank you, God. You are our way maker. You are our miracle worker. You are our promise keeper. And you are our light in the darkness, God. God, we are never alone. We always have Jesus with us. We always have the presence of the Holy Spirit. God, you love your children. You protect your children. And we thank you that we are your children. We thank you for the blessings and the provisions, God. We just thank you for all the many things that you do for us, God. The things that we see and the things that we don't see. God, you are always working. Whether we see it or whether we feel it, you are always working on some detail, something, God. Sometimes we have to wait on you for your perfect will and your perfect timing. Help us to do that, God. God, I just pray for Josie. I just lift her up to you and just pray that you would heal her body and help her to feel better. God, I just pray for all these students that are fixing to go to camp next week. God, I just pray that you would open their hearts and their minds to what you want to teach them through camp. 
God, we just pray for the leaders. We pray that you would be with them too. We learn too when we go to camp. So open our hearts and our minds to what you want to share with us also. And God, we pray for the people that are putting the camp on, the wired camp people. God, we just pray that uh, that they would just, uh, that you would just give them guidance and wisdom as they as they do the instruction and everything, that you would bless them, God, for their time that they put in, the people that are doing praise and worship, God, that you would be with them. God, we just pray for safety in traveling to camp and at camp and on the way back from camp, God. We pray for the parents. We pray that you would be with the parents, God. So much going on right now, God, in our country and all over the world. A lot of unrest, a lot of unknowns. God, we just pray that you would help us to trust you fully in all things. And that all truth, God, would rise above all the lies that have been told. The truth is starting to come out. We knew the truth a long time ago, God, because we have the Holy Spirit that helps us discern uh, truth from lies. And God, we just pray that the liars would be repentant, God, that they would come to you for forgiveness, that you would place conviction on their hearts, God. We just pray, God, for a country that loves you, a country that follows you, and a country that can unite under you once again, God. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. I'm sorry, my nose itches, and YouTube will probably, that's probably my uh, thumbnail for tonight, is me scratching my nose. But it does itch a bit. Well, I'm going to go. I know it was short. I hope you got something out of it. Maybe the scripture touched you in a special way. Maybe something that I said about who God is touched you in a special way. If so, um, give all the glory and honor and praise to uh, the Holy Spirit for leading me in what I said. Um... All right, have an awesome tonight and an awesome tomorrow, which is Friday. These weeks are going by way too fast. These summer weeks are going by way too fast. I get to see my grandkids tomorrow, though, so I'm excited. I'm going to get up early so I can get out of here. I'll get me and my kid out of here. And, um, yeah. Much love and cyber hugs. I'll see you again. Good night.